Yeah, as you know, Gangwu, this course is uh, focused on US-China relations and we have to address the question as is what basically was the role of the United States in this century of humiliation that the Chinese talk about. And as you know, until the Boxer Rebellion, the American troops didn't really fight uh, in China. Uh, but at the same time, the US insisted on most favored nation treatment and joined the settlements in Shanghai and so on and so forth. So how is the US role regarded by Chinese historians when they look at the century of humiliation? Because at the same time, as you know, the US was also very generous and contributed money for the establishment of Tsinghua University. So how would you, how would you characterize uh, Chinese attitude towards the Americans in this century of humiliation? There were lots of reservations about the United States at the beginning, uh, but eventually I would say the Chinese decided that learning from America was a way of dealing with the West mm -hmm. because America was willing to, at least to teach them mm -hmm. in the mission schools, the colleges. Of course, they were also preaching Christianity and, uh, and, and generally trying to convert the Chinese, which they didn't particularly like, mm -hmm. but they didn't mind that. America provided also some opportunities for them, mm -hmm. learning about capitalism, entrepreneurship, all the modern features of economic development. And it was a very successful in America. America's transformation, economic transformation at the end of the 19th century and beginning of the 20th century was really most impressive. I mean, they're, they are the, the great uh, uh, economic growth. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to look at examples uh, in modern times, America showed that. And the Chinese admired all that. Whereas, of course, for the British and the French, they were polite and so on, but they really treated the Chinese well. They offered no, nothing mm -hmm. to the Chinese, really. I mean, they, they would, the Chinese would be absolutely impossible for the Chinese to succeed in, 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 in Europe, in England or France. But in the United States, it was possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though there were racist uh, troubles every now and then with uh, labor unions and so on, but the rich, successful Americans were quite happy to deal with rich and successful Chinese. Mm -hmm. They were dealing at the, at the, at the level of capitalist uh, mm -hmm. cooperation, uh, collaboration, and so on. And generally, they, they admired the Americans. Mm -hmm. Americans had an open society, relatively free and not, uh, too, not too discriminatory to the Chinese. The, the, the Chinese did feel it there, but the Chinese couldn't even get to Britain and France. Mm -hmm. Whereas the United States, at least, they got there. Mm -hmm treated not so well, but on the whole, many, many Chinese benefited from them. Mm. And the students, the Americans invited and opened up itself to Chinese students mm. by the thousands, right from the beginning, very early, mm. whereas hardly any Chinese went to Britain or France. A Japanese did for the Navy, for naval mm. to, yes. again, at the military level. But in the, where America was concerned, it was educational, it was cultural, civilizational in a way. Mm. And the entrepreneurship that the Americans showed appealed very much to the Chinese. Mm -hmm. So the Chinese had very mixed feelings. And, but on the whole, I would say, in balance, the, the Chinese were very positive about America, right up to 1949, up to the Korean War. Mm 